I can't ignore it any longer, guys. Blender has gotten too good. And after a decade of Cinema 4D, I'm finally making the switch over to Blender. The transition process going over to Blender honestly hasn't been that bad, but there are some things from Cinema 4D that I miss. But these five add-ons are helping me make the switch from Cinema 4D to Blender a little easier. And while not all these add-ons are free, the price of what you're saving on a Cinema 4D subscription it's basically pennies on the dollar. So first up, let's start off with the add-on Physical Starlight and Atmosphere. I like this add-on because it gives me real-world physical lighting. It really reminds me of Redshift's dome light, but with a lot more features. You can control the time of day, it has atmosphere, realistic shadows, stars, nighttime settings, and really just a lot of things to help create an overall environment-style lighting to your scene. And really it's nice getting a lot of these settings instead of combining a bunch of different lighting setups inside of Redshift. Another add-on that helps with lighting that is just really a nice add-on generally for setting up your product renders or your scene renders is Light Wrangler. This just gives you a super fast way to add lights, edit them, control their temperature and their power, and it's really perfect for getting those softbox reflections and getting those cinematic lighting setups really quickly. I really like being able to orbit the light around a product to kind of get a sense of what the light is hitting or what the reflections are looking like real quickly. And you can do this in Redshift. It just takes a lot of extra steps, what to sort of set that you want to target your light to be. And then if you need to ever edit that, it's just kind of a hassle with managing the layers and putting in different things. But Light Wrangler is able to manage and do all that real quickly. I really like it because lighting has become fun again. It doesn't seem like such a chore to set up with Light Wrangler. All right, so speaking of Redshift, we're moving away from the EV render, and if you want the Redshift style rendering, you're gonna move over to Cycles naturally. So making the shift from Redshift over to Cycles has been great, but one of the things is I feel like Cycles needs a lot of samples to get clean renders, and it just takes a lot of time. The next add-on that helps with this is Turbo Tools. It's definitely good to jump into Cycles to learn all the settings, but what I like about Turbo Tools, I can get clean cycle renders up and running real quickly with no problem. I like that it has a couple of basic settings to kind of get either your still images, or your animations up and running with some presets. And it also has really great temporal stabilization. And what that means is, is basically after you have a full res render, if you notice a little bit of flickering from any of that noise reduction happening in your animations, Turbo Tools can take the information from your render and stabilize all that so you don't get the flickering in your renders, but you get nice clean images. You don't always need to do that noise reduction because you can get clean renders quickly. And if you want more settings like cycles, you can set it all to manual to dial those in. But to get you up and running and get clean cycles renders real quickly and reducing the amount of time that it takes to use cycles from just stock settings, it's a huge game changer and it's been really easy to use and I really like it. So the fourth add-on, this is a big one and this is Blender 2 AE. And anyone who's using 3D renders and After Effects together, this plugin is a must have, no brainer. And Blender to 80 is awesome because you get all the functionality like you used to in Cinema 4D. You can select your camera, you can get nulls, you can get positioning data, you get all that, one click, imports into After Effects, forgot a couple of things, no big deal. Go back to Blender, select a couple of layers, click import, and that goes all into After Effects as well in one composition and everything's contained. There's no going back and forth, no AEC files, no you know project files like Sim 4D sometimes you try to extract stuff and it doesn't work. You kind of get all that functionality really fast. It's talking to it and it really reminds me of Overlord and Illustrator going to After Effects if you've ever used that plugin. So just a couple few reasons I love this add-on and it's making my transition so much easier and real smooth. Now the fifth add-on, it's kind of a smaller one, not as big of a deal, it's also free, is the 3D viewport pie menus. Now there's a small feature in here that I really like that saves me a ton of time. It basically gives me a shortcut that instantly moves the anchor point to any of the geometry to its base. So if you ever use the access center tool of Sumo 4D, this is very similar to that. And really it's just one of those quality of life making the switch from Sumo 4D to Blender things that I really enjoy. Quick and simple, those are currently my five favorite add-ons while I make the switch from Sumo 4D over to Blender. If you're considering to make the switch from Sumo 4D to Blender, Blender's release of 4.2 started this whole new version of Blender that I think you will absolutely love. And anyone out there using Cinema 4D, I really think it's worth considering where Blender is going in the future. I'm hoping to have more updates on switching from Cinema 4D to Blender as we kind of move on. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments. Otherwise, you know the drill. Give it a like, sub. I don't need to tell you what to do. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great one, guys.